got to record. <laughs> you got to keep an eye on me. All right. Cranial nerve number five. Function. Any function for cranial nerve number five. Sensory of the uh, eye. Like okay, sensory of the eye. Let's just talk about general sensory information for cranial nerve number five. Outer ears. And outer ears, all of them, yep. Mm -hmm. general, that's general sensory information. There's three different divisions. Okay, there's five one, five two, and five three. So that's gonna be if I, this is, um, five one is ophthalmic, five two is maxillary, five three is mandibular. So it looks like that. And there's some nice pictures in the slides presentation. So it's just op ophthalmic, maxillary mandibular okay five one five two and five three now since there's general sensory information no matter what the cranial nerve is what nucleus is it going to use correct it is going to use the main sensory or spinal nucleus of trigeminal so let's draw that in we have here there's our main sensory and our spinal nucleus of trigeminal. Label this. Okay. So three different divisions. Like I said, you're going to get. B1, which is going to be, I'll even write that down, ophthalmic. Okay, your V2 division is going to be your maxillary. Okay, and then your V3 is going to be your mandibular. So three different divisions. Information from all three divisions is going to come in as part of cranial nerve number five. Afferent information comes in, travels through cranial nerve number five, and then synapses here in either the main sensory or the spinal nucleus of trigeminal. Tell me some of the specific general sensory areas received. I'll put up here general sensory, general sensation for cranial nerve number five specifically. What is it responsible for? General sensation of what? Face. Face. Okay. What? What was another one? Was there another one? Cornea. Cornea. Anybody else? Tongue. What part of the what part of the tongue? Anterior. Yep, anterior two thirds of the tongue. Anything else? Yeah, nasal and oral cavities. That's all the, the sensory information that is going to be received by cranial nerve number five. All the general sensory. Alex? Yeah. It says nasal cavity, but oral cavity is just like. Not cavity. Inside your cheek? Okay. Yeah, not cavity, inside your cheek, like oral cavity. Yeah. And I guess, you know, I'm thinking about it, maybe toothpaste. Toothpaste, since it's part of your gum, would be here with them. and then mandibular. So ophthalmic, think eye, maxillary, think cheek, mandibular, think jaw. Any other, Ellie, did you have a question? And with all those three divisions, is that 
base sensation and then they divide it in those different areas. Mm -hmm. So like that would all be considered the mm -hmm. base. Yeah, there's three different three different nerves that, that that branch off. Trigeminal is a huge nerve. Uh oh. Okay. Um I gotta plug in somewhere. Well, I'll just keep going. Let's see what happens. Let's see how much time I have. Twenty seven minutes. Okay. We'll see what happens. Okay, other questions? I'd have to get a plug. I don't have one. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, give me another function for cranial nerve number five. Per perception for what? So what nucleus is it used to do that? Mesencephalic nucleus. So here's my mesencephalic nucleus. So Cranial nerve number five is receiving information about proprioception for muscles of mastication. Okay, that information comes in, travels as cranial nerve number five, and synapses in the mesosymphalic nucleus in the pons. Okay. Is that clear? Did I see what's happening? Okay, give me another function for cranial nerve number five. Has a motor for yeah, muscles of mastication. So motor function for muscles of mastication. So the motor function for muscles of mastication happens through which nucleus? Yep, here's my motor nucleus of trigeminal. Okay, the motor nucleus of trigeminal. In the motor nucleus of trigeminal, uh, here's a neuronal cell body. It's going to send out axons that travel through cranial nerve number five. And those axons are going to innervate muscles of mastication. Is it making sense a little bit? A little bit? Getting it? And that's cranial nerve number five. Okay, thinking about, so four above the pons, four in the pons. So five is number one. The second one is going to be cranial nerve number six. Cranial nerve number six is abducens. Abducens here, I'm gonna draw it on the opposite side so you'll be able to see it. It's gonna be much more medial. Okay, here's gonna be abducens. Cranial nerve number six. Okay, cranial nerve number six is an easy one. All right, because we just have one, one nucleus to deal with, and that's going to be the abducens nucleus that's sitting here. You know, and in a perfect world, if I could have done that with cranial nerve three, I would have done it. If you want to look and see what I did, but that that would be ideal. But that three dimension, I have I'm limited to two here. So this is cranial lower motor neurons here, and the abducens nucleus. Okay, send out axons that innervate lateral rectus. Mm -hmm. ah. Cranial nerve number six, that's an easy one. Cranial nerve number seven, looking at cranial nerve number seven, it's just going to be a little bit more lateral to abducens, so I'll put it right here on the opposite side. There's cranial nerve number seven. Cranial nerve number seven has numerous functions. It's a mixed cranial nerve. OK, 
Okay, give me a function for cranial nerve number seven. Lateral glands. Okay, which nucleus is it going to use for lateral gl gland, gland innervation? Yeah, superior salivatory. So let's go ahead and draw in our superior salivatory, which will be right here. Okay, here's our superior salivatory nucleus. So lower motor neurons in the superior salivatory nucleus send out axons through cranial nerve number seven, and that provides innervation to lacrimal, submandibular, and sublingual lingual glands. Okay, because that's cranial nerve number seven part of what it does, part of its function. Give me another function for cranial nerve number seven. Yeah, muscles of facial expression. To use the, what it uses, cranial nerve number seven, then uses the facial nucleus. Okay, so there's the facial nucleus. So lower motor neurons, or an alpha, lower motor neuron, so body here in the facial nucleus sends out axons through cranial nerve number seven. And this is voluntary motor activity for muscles of facial, facial expression. And one little muscle that everybody forgets, stapedius. Somebody didn't forget it. Stapedius. Okay. Other functions for cranial nerve number seven. Give me another function. Taste. Oh, the taste one. For taste, we have to draw in my friend the solitary nucleus, and he resides down here in the medulla, right? So this is the solitary nucleus, and we know that solitary nucleus is involved with taste. Okay, as far as taste is concerned, it's going to be, can you see that? Yeah, taste of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and it's in purple. Okay, taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. It's going to travel through as cranial nerve number seven, and then come in here and synapse on the solitary nucleus. That's cranial nerve, one of the functions for cranial nerve number seven. Okay, any other functions for cranial nerve number seven that you can think of? General sensation. Yes, general sensation and specifically of the ear canal. Okay, so let's say ear canal. So general sensory for the ear canal. Okay. general sensory information for the ear canal. It's going to travel in through the seventh cranial nerve, okay, and then synapse once it gets into the brainstem here in the main sensory or spinal nucleus of trigeminal. Okay, remember cranial nerve number seven is mostly motor, a little bit of sensory. Okay, last cranial nerve. It's going to be cranial nerve number eight. Oh, it's kind of crowded there. Um, so cranial nerve number eight is going to be, I'm going to write it over here. More toward, I'll put it down here. There's cranial nerve number eight. Squeeze it in. Okay, cranial nerve number eight is easy because it's purely sensory. Okay, and cranial nerve number eight is the stimulo cochlear, and it uses the cochlear, oops, cochlear, and the stimular nuclei. 
So information coming in from the ear. I'll do a little ear here. Or the vestibular apparatus. Okay, they join together just outside of the structures, travel in through cranial nerve number eight, and if it's information from the ear, goes to the cochlear nucleus, information from the vestibular apparatus, uh oh, goes into the vestibular nucleus. I think I have five, 15 minutes. Okay, questions, and I'll label that. There's, this is your cochlear, general, general sensation, cochlear nucleus, and this is your vestibular. Okay, those are all cranial nerve nuclei in the ponds, five, six, seven, and eight. And those are the nuclei that those cranial nerves use to carry out their functions. Is it starting to you get it? Seeing what's happening? Just different colors. The different colors are there because they're using different nuclei. Did you have a question, Jenna? Oh, you're just looking? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just want to make sure that I answer all, all your questions. Okay, I'm going to run and get a plug. I'll be right back. Let's take a 